Well, welcome to another edition of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be looking at a topic that I have seen coming up more and more and more in our culture, and that is the subtle, the sneaky, the sly attempt of the LGBTQ community, if you want to call it that, to infiltrate the means of communication in our society, and most notably the government, to use as a tool an arm of propaganda for their cause. And you see this all over the place. You see it in the propaganda tool of the LGBTQ movement in big business, in commercials, and you see it, I have seen it most uh, alarmingly in television shows. You know, it just seems like all of a sudden there'll be saw a couple coming out of a building and then all of a sudden behind them you'll see a so-called gay couple and it's just on and on and on. You are assaulted in television programs, you're assaulted in movies nowadays. There is this onslaught, this propaganda that is coming our way and it's coming from the purveyors of the gay revolution that we've seen. Now, the biggest triumph that they had was the uh, same-sex marriage ruling a few years back. But ever since that, it seems like the floodgates have been opening and we're having to put up with this subtle, sly, sneaky, trying to influence our thinking in our culture to try to include uh, sexual perversion, sexual immorality on a scale that we've never ever seen before in this country. And one of the little subtle propaganda tools now is part of the United States government and the Ad Council that is funded through taxpayers' money, the Ad Council. Now you've seen these little ads, these television clips, these public service clips for years and years and years. And sometimes late at night, if you've ever watched late night television, you'll see more of these during the late night times than you will during the day because the television stations are trying to generate a little revenue. And so they are, they run these little uh, public service ads and they're not very expensive to run, but they run them anyway. And you see these ad council, and they're supposed to be helpful little tips on one aspect of life or another aspect of life. You might see an ad council uh, video clip commercial on the dangers of smoking, and you know, trying to encourage you to live a healthy lifestyle, to exercise right, to eat right, eat the right foods, be healthy. Um, they're they're kind of benign little commercials that pop up and then and, and it says the ad council you also see them in magazines uh, little uh, pictures and ads in magazines and the newspaper on radio you hear ad council uh, clips on radio also and they're they're usually just kind of boring they're kind of bland they're kind of banal um, ads that, that are just ho-hum, you, you yawn at them. But what you see lately since the LGBTQ revolution started, and especially since the so-called gay marriage ruling, is you see the, even the Ad Council now is jumping on board and they're trying to get you and they're trying to get me to think that it's completely normal for sexual perverts and perversity to prevail in our society. It's just normal they're trying to convince us. And here is a Ad Council video clip star starring the wrestler John Senna. And he is going to try to talk to you one-to-one. -one. And he's trying to be a cool dude. And he's trying to convince you that diversity in the United States is the most important goal and that we've got to accept every single American 
and that we've got to accept not only their own right to exist, but we've got to accept how they live and how they want to have as their lifestyle. And we've got to accept the whole nine yards. And if we don't, we're not American. That's what this ad council video clip is trying to do. So let's roll that ad council video clip. And then at certain places, maybe two or three times, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to make some commentary because I'm going to expose this ad for what it is. And it's a propaganda tool for the LGBTQ community and their cause. But we're going to expose it. We're going to, we're going to show you what is false and what is misleading and the lies in this ad so that you are not fooled because we need to begin to be discerning. We cannot trust our culture. We cannot assume that our culture is going to be a safe place to live in because it's not. It's increasingly a dangerous place to live in. And so we have to expose the lies that are being fed to us through television and radio and magazines and newspapers and the internet, and we need to be aware that we are under propaganda assault. And we need to be able to spot these right away when we see them, when, when we see an ad council ad, when we see it in the newspaper, when we see it on, hear it on radio or see it on television, we need to go, wait a minute, that is a lie. That is a falsehood. That is a bait and switch. They're trying to lead me along a path and then all of a sudden they switch products on me. And so we need to be careful and discerning. And so let's go ahead and roll this clip and then I'm gonna jump back in at certain places in the clip. Let's roll it right now. Patriotism. There's a word thrown around a lot. It inspires passionate debate and it's worn like a badge of honor and with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. Love. For a word designed to unite, it can also be pretty divisive. You see, there's more to patriotism than flag sequin onesies and rodeos and quadruple cheeseburgers. Patriotism is love for a country, not just pride in it. But what really makes up this country of ours? What is it we love? It's more than just a huge rock full of animals like cougars and eagles, right? It's the people. Do me a favor. Close your eyes for a second. I want to try something else. Picture the average U.S. citizen. Think about it. How old are they? What's their hair like? How much can they bench? You got one? Okay. So chances are, the person you're picturing right now looks a little different to the real average American. There are 319 million U.S. citizens. 51% are female. So first off, the average American is a woman. Cool, huh? Is that what you pictured? 54 million are Latino, 40 million senior citizens, 27 million are disabled, 18 million are Asian. That's more people in the U.S. than play football and baseball combined. 9 million are lesbian, gay, bi, transgender, more than the entire amount of people that live in the state of Virginia. Okay, as you can see, he's going along and he's describing the diverse ethnic groups and the age groups and the diversity in the United States, and there's nothing wrong with that. This country has always been a diverse melting pot of people from all the nations. And he, he's going down and he's talking about um, Muslims, and he's talking about Hispanics, and he's talking about all these diverse groups, social groups, and that's perfectly legit. And everybody agrees that this country was fashioned, was shaped, was formed by immigrants and people who were different from each other. Although the core group that came here was European. The core group that came here was mostly Protestant, was mostly white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. That, those were the original immigrants to this population in this country. And they had to uh, make their way in the wilderness and try to survive. And they were the ones that brought the European culture to this country. And they also brought uh, Christianity to this continent. And that has to be included in the mix. 
And we'll see later where he totally and utterly disregards any kind of historical context for our country, United States. He does not mention in any way, shape, or form the Judeo-Christian foundations that provided the philosophy and provided the moral uh, background and provided the spiritual background, the Judeo-Christian heritage. And there was diversity in that because the early settlers were mostly Protestant that came from Europe, but there were also people coming from Europe who were Roman Catholic. And so there was diversity within Christianity already from an early stage. And there were also some Jews that came from Europe as well. And so Jewish people, Catholic people, Protestant people, and, and then the not even including all of the diversity within Protestantism, the Baptists, the Congregationalists, the Presbyterians, the Anglican, the Lutheran, and they all came over here and had to get along but there was a common core, and that was the Christian faith among Christians. And there was even a common core among uh, Christianity and Judaism because they shared so much of the Bible, the Old Testament, together. So there was a common book upon which almost every single person could get along in the forming of our nation. And that is totally absent from this Ad Council video clip. Uh, it's as if all of a sudden there was just this piece of land and all of a sudden there's diversity and there's no cultural heritage, there's no foundation, there's no context. It's just everybody is here and out of the blue they just come here and want to live. And so we need to uh, act as if we have to reinvent uh, everything there is to be about civilization. And that's totally, totally false. So that omission gives you a clue that he is trying to totally eliminate any kind of Judeo-Christian moral and spiritual heritage. That isn't right, and that has to be exposed. But what is even more subtle than that absence of Judeo-Christian heritage mentioned here is that he tries to throw in lifestyles that have never been included in the diversity mix before. He's trying to throw in the LGBTQ uh, segments of society and say, see, these are the same kind of social units as Hispanics, as African Americans, as Italians, as Asian Americans, as older people, seniors, as younger people, as handicaps, and then he wants to throw in, oh, in the LGBTQ community. No, that is an entirely different category. That is an entirely different uh, way of classifying people in our society. It's taking away from the different diverse ethnic groups, and it's throwing in a totally odd, strange, uh, incomprehensible category of people based on their lifestyle and based on their sexual preferences. This is totally different than any of the other categories that he's mentioning. And he wants to try to slip it in there and say, see, this is what America means. This is the diversity that America stands for. Well, it isn't. It doesn't stand for that because he's, he's missing all kinds of people if he's going to open that door and we're gonna talk about that later, but let's go on with the video clip. Around 10 million a redhead, 5.1 million play ultimate frisbee, and three and a half million are Muslim. Trip the number of people currently serving in the United States military. Almost half the country belongs to minority groups. People who are lesbian, African American, and bi, and transgender, and Native American, and proud of it. Okay, so he mentions LGBT again. Uh, in the whole diverse mixture of the American landscape. And my question to him would be, well, why stop there? He, he mentioned LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. But why stop there? Why not include, why not name, if you're going to be consistent, polygamous, 
That is, people who are in a marriage, illegal marriage, but that can be taken care of in a few more years because just like so-called gay marriage was taken care of a couple years ago when the Supreme Court ruled that that was legal now, so can uh, polygamy be ruled okay. There are groups of people in our country who live in polygamous marriages. There are three wives that have one husband. There are four wives. There are five wives that have one husband. These groups, polygamous, um, are part of the diversity of the United States. But he didn't mention that. I wonder why. I wonder why he didn't mention that. Or, for example, what about groups that practice intergenerational love? For example, like a grandmother uh, marrying her grandson uh, and having sex with her grandson, a grandmother having sex with her grandson. Why, why not mention that? That's a, that's a different type of sexual lifestyle. That's a different type of sexual preference. Uh, why, why isn't that talked about in this video clip? Or why, why isn't all other kinds of sexual perversion mentioned in this video clip? For example, there's a group called MAMBLA, a Man-Boy Love Association. And this uh, was a very prestigious group in the early days of the gay rights movement. And all of a sudden, it's all of a sudden it's gone. It's not part of the landscape for their movement. Uh, and why isn't that included? Uh, this relationship between uh, older men and younger boys. Uh, why isn't that mentioned by this uh, spokesman for diversity? So in other words, my point is there is a selection process that's being taken uh, and put in the forefront and these other perverse, diverse lifestyles, these sexual oddities, these sexual perversities are not mentioned at all. Uh, the more extreme ones. Well, why don't, why doesn't he mention those? Why doesn't he mention the group of people that have sexual relationship with animals? Uh, if you go on YouTube, we've done a program on the ridiculous, perverse uh, advocacy of humans having sex with animals. And it's, it's a reality. There are people, there are strange perverts who do this. And would he include that with the diverse uh, multiplicity of Americans who uh, are all Americans and need to be proud of being an American? No, he doesn't mention these groups. See, it's only the right kinds of groups, the ones that are accepted, that have pushed for acceptance today, that are included in his vision of America. But if you're going to open the whole can of worms for the sexual preferences as on a par with ethnic groups, if you're gonna say that the LGBT community is on a par with Hispanics, or if you're going to say that the LGB uh, people in our country are on a par with African Americans, and that they're a minority just like the uh, Asian Americans are a minority, if you're going to start calling these sexual perverse lifestyle groups minorities, then why stop with just the LGBTQ? Uh, why not go on through the whole listing of the acronyms now? And there are, there are listings that include probably out to 15 or 20 letters that represent all of these, the diverse sexual perversity in our country. If you're going to call them a, a, a minority group, then you're going to have to mention all of them and you're going to have to include all of them and you're going to have to uh, get children in the high schools, in the junior high, in the grade schools to, to recognize our sexual diversity in our country and that each of them is part of a minority group and that we need to embrace all of them because they have a right to do what they want to do with their own bodies. And so you're going to have to include all of them, not just some of them. See, that's the problem. We have this sort of sanitized, whitewashed view of perversity today, but they're going to reject the more extreme 
uh, expressions of perversity. And this John Senna is going to walk down the street and he's going to talk about the Hispanics and he's going to talk about the African Americans. He's going to talk about the Asian Americans. He's going to talk about disabled people. Then he's going to talk about the LG, the lesbians and the gays and the bisexuals and transgenders. And they're all minorities. They're all part of America. That's what he's going to talk to you about. Well, why doesn't he start talking about the members of the polygamous communities in Utah? Are they Americans? Why doesn't he mention them? Well, because they're not accepted yet. They're not included yet in the okay group of perverts who are allowed to function in our society. But they'll get there one day and then he'll be walking down the street telling you about all of these other perverse sexual practices. But I'm saying to you, that when you look at the Judeo-Christian heritage of our country, if you look at the Judeo-Christian heritage of Europe, and then later the Judeo-Christian heritage of the United States, you will find that we have a moral basis for a civilization here. And that moral basis has served us well. It has provided the best freedom of any place to live on in the whole planet Earth. And that freedom came about because there was a balance between total sexual license and immorality and moral license and do what you, whatever you want to do if you can get away with it and responsibility. There was a balance that people knew what was right and what was wrong and they had a sense of responsibility that I can't do that because that's wrong, not because people think it's wrong, it's wrong because God says it's wrong. It's wrong because the Bible teaches that it's wrong. So that's out of bounds, but this is good and this is right. And so we can have diversity and we can have unity, but there are certain lines that cannot be crossed. And that's what the Judeo-Christian heritage teaches us. It teaches us that there is such a thing called a marriage. And that thing is defined as a man and a woman together producing offspring, if they can. Now, of course, if in a marriage, if something happens and they are prevented from having offspring, from bearing children, if the woman cannot bear a child, or if the man cannot produce uh, children, then that's different. But the natural, normal, expected course of action is to uh, people, a man and a woman, get married, they have children, and then those children, when they're of age, they will typically normally marry. Uh, if it's a boy, he will marry a girl, and if it's a girl, she will marry a boy. And they will, again, form a small community called a family. They will enter into a, a, a covenant called a marriage, and that is the way society goes forward. But today, that whole context, that Judeo-Christian understanding, that it's not even Judeo-Christian. You don't even have to have a Bible to know that that's the right way. There's a natural law basis for a man and a woman marriage. Today, that's thrown out. It's totally ignored. Today, we're supposed to believe that, oh no, that old marriage model, that doesn't necessarily apply. There might be two women who decide they want to form a marriage and a family. There might be two men that want to form a marriage and a family. And we need to embrace that according to this man, John Senna, and this Ad Council video clip. And we need to embrace them. And we need to see that that is part of our great diversity that made our country great. Well, it's not. That kind of perversity, that immorality did not make our nation great. And it will not make our nation great it will make our nation fall and collapse into a moral ash heap because that is something that cannot sustain itself. No nation, no civilization can embrace and twist and pervert the institution of marriage and last for long. That's what our Christian heritage teaches us. But the funny thing is, if he's going to ask us to embrace that, then why not ask us to embrace all the other odd, perverse sexual practices that are now occurring in our society. No, he's not going to mention those. 
He's going to sweep those under the rug. He doesn't want to talk about those. Those aren't very uh, accepted right now. Those aren't appropriate. But there's no logical reason why, if you're going to embrace that perversity, then you don't invite, invite that perversity also into the diverse camp of the United States. Well, the whole thing is wrong. It's mistaken. And we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware that we are being propagandized. And we need to wake up and realize that this is happening right in front of our eyes. I hope it's not fooling you. I hope that you have enough common sense to understand what's going on. Let's finish the clip. We know that labels don't devalue us, they help define us, keeping us dialed into our cultures and our beliefs and who we are as Americans. After all, what's more American than freedom to celebrate the things that make us, us? I mean, it's stitched into the stars and stripes of this country, from the Constitution to Gettysburg, to our motto, E Pluribus Unum, from many, one. It's even in our country's name, the United States. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, disability, sexuality, race, religion, and any other labels. Because the second any of us judge people based on those labels, we're not really being patriotic, are we? So let's try this one more time. Close your eyes. Picture the average Joe or Joan or Juan or Jean-Luc. The real people will make America, America. And this year, whenever you feel the urge to don those star-spangled shorts, set off fireworks the size of my biceps to show love for our country, remember that to love America is to love all Americans because love has no labels. So that was the video clip from the Ad Council. Uh, which I have labeled properly propaganda, LGBTQ propaganda. We need to be aware that this is taking place. Now, this is just one example. And I pulled this from the internet about a year ago. We are seeing a lot more of this all over the place. And we need to be aware of it. We need to be totally aware of the fact that we are being propagandized in this way. So be on your guard. You're going to be assaulted by this, but don't be taken in by it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.